Hello guys and welcome to an Arduino tutorial and today we are going to make a keyboard instrument uh, with a buzzer and push buttons. Uh, this lesson is part of the Ultimate Arduino Beginner's Guide series and this is lesson 13. Um, now today we're going to be doing something a bit different that we haven't done yet before and it's going to be called a resistor ladder. So whilst it's possible to simply hook up a number of momentary switches to digital inputs to a key of different tones, in this project you'll be constructing something called a resistor ladder. This is a way to read the number of switches using an analogue input. It's helpful technique if you find yourself short on digital inputs. You'll hook up a number of switches that are connected in parallel to analogue in naught. Most of these will connect to power through a resistor. When you press each button, a different voltage level will pass to the input pin. If you press two buttons at the same time, you'll get a unique input based on the relationship between two resistors in parallel. So, let's uh, have a look at what you'll need. Today you'll only need some basic stuff, uh, an Arduino Uno, uh, a half sized breadboard or bigger, a piezoelectric buzzer, generic push buttons, and jumper wires. <coughs> so that's all you'll need. So let's uh, have a look at the wiring diagram. I've put a wiring diagram on the screen now. Wire up the breadboard with power and ground as in the previous projects. Connect one end of the piezo to ground. Connect the other end to pin 8 on your Arduino. Place your switches on the breadboard as shown in the circuit. The arrangement of resistors and switches feeding into an analogue input is called a resistor ladder. Connect the first one directly to power. Connect the second, third and fourth switches to power through a 220 ohm, 10 kilo ohm and 1 mega ohm resistor respectively. Connect all the switches outputs together in one junction. Connect this junction to ground with a 10 kilo ohm resistor and also connect it to analog in naught. Each of these acts as a voltage divider. So, each one, so the first one, if you press the first one, it will send through 1023 to an A0 because that's the biggest analogue in. If you press the second one, it's got a slight resistor, so it'll be, you know, less than that. If you press the third button, it'll be even less than that. And if you press the fourth button, it'll be even less than that because we've used on the first one 220 ohm, second one 10 kilo ohm, and third one 1 mega ohm. Okay, let's jump into having a look at the code. In this program you'll need to keep a list of frequencies you want to play when you press each of your buttons. You can start out with the frequencies for middle C, D, E and F which is 262HZ, 294HZ, 330HZ and 349HZ. To do this you'll need a new kind of variable called an array. <laughs> An array is a way to store different values that are related to each other, like frequencies in a musical scale, using only one name. They are a convenient tool for you to quickly and efficiently access information. To declare an array, start as you would with a variable, but follow the name with a pair of square brackets. After the equal sign, you'll place your elements in curly brackets. To change or read the elements in the array. You'll reference the individual element using the array name and then the index of the item you want to appear. Address, sorry. The index refers to the order in which the items appear when the array is created. The first item in the array is item 0, the second is item 1, and so forth. So we've got arrays there. Int button 6. So that's an array with six integers, and int buttons naught equals two. Give the first element of the array the value two. Okay, now I need to create an array of frequencies. So set up the array of four notes using the frequencies listed above. Make this array a global variable by declaring it before the setup. Int note equals 262.294.330.349. Now you need to begin serial communication. So in your setup, start serial communication with the computer. So serial.begin 9600. So, so far, we've create, we set up an array with six integers, 
We've given the first element of the array the value 2, and we have uh, set up an array of four notes using the frequencies that you saw on the previous slide. In, your, uh, in the loop, declare a local variable to hold the value read on pin A0. Because each switch has a different resistor value connecting it to power, each will have a different value associated with it. To see the values, add the line serial print line key val to send to the computer. So what this is going to do is it's going to it's going to print the key val to the serial monitor. And the key val is what key you're pressing. So now you need to use an if else statement to determine which note to play. So using an if else statement you can assign each value to a different tone. These values included in the example program are ballpark figures for these value sizes. All the, resistance, all the resistors have some tolerance for error. These may not work exactly for you, but you can use the information from the serial monitor to adjust as necessary. So if keyval equals equals 1023, tone 8 no, notes 0. Okay, I'm going to step back and explain this a bit more. On your first button, you have got no resistance, absolutely no resistance. And so it's going to send out all five volts to analog in. Now the analog in uh, will read 1023 with five volts. So we're saying if it's five volts, we need to play, so tone, eight notes naught. Okay. Now let's have a look at the second part of this. Else if keyval um, is uh, less than or equal to 990 and, and keyval is uh, more than. Sorry, I'm getting wrong. Um, and <clears throat> if keyval is uh, less than 1010. Uh, tone 8 notes 1, so it's going to play the next note. Okay, so after if, each if, if statement, call the tone function. The program references the array to determine what frequency to play. If the value of A0 matches one of your statements, you can tell the Arduino to play the tone. It's possible the circuit is a bit noisy and the values may fluctuate a little bit while pressing the switch. To accommodate for this variation, it's a good idea to have a small range of values to check it against. If you use the comparison AND AND, you can check multiple statements to see if they are true. So if you press the first button, notes 0 will play. If you press the second, notes 1 will play. If you press the third, notes 2 will play. This is when the arrays become really handy. Only one frequency can play on one pin at any time, so if you're pressing multiple keys, you'll only hear one sound. To stop playing notes when there is no button being pressed, Call the no tone function, providing the pin number to stop playing sound on. So um, that's just the code. Um, so on each one, we've got a small range, and we're going to play that note when the analog in pin receives that amount of electricity, <coughs> which will be different for each button. So on the first button, it'll be 1023. On the second button, it'll be between 990 and what? 1010. On the third button it will be between 505 uh, and 515 and on the last one it will be between 5 and 10. So let's uh, just, I'm going to set you some challenges now. So your first challenge um, of today is to change the notes that are played. Maybe come up with some of your own. Well not come up with some of your own but change the notes your next challenge is to change the thing so it has five buttons and not four, and it's a five-buttoned keyboard instrument, or maybe even six. And your last challenge is to... Um, let me think of a challenge. Yeah, your last challenge is to have a little start-up melody. So when it comes on, it plays a little melody like... Do -do 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 or something like that, just to say that it's turned on and it's ready for use. Now that is all for today, thanks for watching, um, I hope you enjoyed this Arduino tutorial, 
And next time we are moving off kind of tone and we're going to do something else that's especially difficult to finish off the series with. With one or two lessons of something more difficult. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.